everyone. My name is Bree, and welcome to Document to Journey. Today is a tutorial video. Um, I'm combining three prompts, pine, candy cane, and winter animal. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we are going to be using a pencil, an eraser, a ballpoint pen, and then I have a little palette of watercolors here. These are by Letter Sparrow, but you can use any watercolors that you have. And then obviously water brushes. So the first thing we're gonna start off is our uh, pen with our pencil. Uh, the paper that I'm using is a watercolor paper by a Handbook. I'm almost finished with it, so I am excited to move on because I'm not a huge fan of this, but that technically is beside the point. So. What we're going to be drawing today is a penguin. I'm super excited. He is holding a candy cane and behind him is a pine tree. So what I'm going to start off with is almost like a snowman. I'm going to draw a circle for his head like that and a circle for his body. His body is bigger than his head. So I have two circles. They do overlap there and that is perfectly fine. That is what we want because his head wants to sit on top of his body. So now what we're going to do is we are going to draw his arms. His arms are just little triangles like this. And when you draw them, you want them to kind of pop out of his body like so. And then we are going to draw the scarf. The scarf comes around his neck. It is like a rectangle like that and then the rectangles are gonna come down. So I'm gonna put a little square here. The square is kind of bending towards the scarf and his scarf is going to pop out. So this is going to be like a rectangle, but it pops out so it kind of like forms across his body and then it closes and it's gonna have some triangle-like little scruff there. We're gonna put the back one here it's gonna kind of be behind a lot of things, so you don't have to draw it all in, but kind of like that. Now at any point, if this is too fast for you, you can easily pause the video and um, come back to it when you're ready. So at this point, um, we want to make a little bit of hump on that scarf, so that way it looks like it's folded over. And then we are also going to draw the candy cane. The candy cane, is a half of a circle here and now I'm gonna make the end so I curve it around and then I'm gonna do a parallel line to what I've already drawn and then the bottom of the candy cane up like that. I'm gonna erase some of the lines that I don't need because then this will be beneficial to me when we are inking it up with the ballpoint. This scarf is in front of the arm the front one is but the other part of the scarf is behind and then we already drew the candy cane behind we can add the candy cane lines when you're doing this you're curving the lines and then you're also making sure that you are going in the same direction the whole time so I curved it around and now we're going down that one's there so we're gonna go here and this is our candy cane we can move on to the face up here. Our face, we are pretty much just going to draw the triangle. I'm going to make it a pretty big triangle for his nose. And then we're going to make almost like a heart shape. So the heart shape is going to come around and down like this for his face or her face. Keep saying his. And then to continue that down his body or her body, we're going to their body. We're going to do this and at that point it comes to a point so I'm just making these lines parallel and down here you can't really see it so we're not going to worry about it on this side. For the feet we're going to come down and we are going to make him have some longer legs and for his feet he's going to have or she's going to have three toes one two and three. It's kind of like an M. I just make that uh, middle toe a little longer. I put them uh, pigeon toed, um, but you can kind of do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. We're going to go up here for the eyes. They are going to be ovals. 
So I'm going to make two half circles, one here and one here. It's looking off in that direction, so another two half circles, one there, one there. If you want it to be a boy, you can kind of leave it. If you want it to be a girl, you can make little eyelashes. That's up to you. I'm going to give her some eyebrows. And that is going to be it for the penguin for now. We are going to add the hair to it, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, the next thing we're going to draw is the tree. So what you're thinking, or what you need to think about is just adding a triangle into your image. And I'm going to put it on a, a trunk. And now with that, I'm going to hold my pencil really far back. Let me put the cap onto this. I'm going to hold it far back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make some wavy lines and some points. Just like this. Very simple. You're just scribbling, um, making some points. It's not... Um, nothing else but kind of scribbling through your triangle just to create some shape and kind of like the illusion that that tree is um, kind of prickly. And I'm going to do the same thing to my penguin. So I'm going to create some little tufts of hair up here because that's cute and then I'm going to kind of just scribble around the edge. When I do this, I'm moving my pencil, kind of rotating it, and I'm doing that every place that the penguin has kind of like fur. So on his hands, and then down the bottom of the body, even here, and up here in the heart shape that we made, just to create the illusion of fur. I am going to have my little uh, penguin sitting on a sheet of water or maybe ice. And then I'm going to draw a line where my, my tree stands. And that is our sketch. Now for ballpoint pen. For ballpoint pen, I am going to outline the whole entire thing. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to speed this process up so that way, and maybe cut some spots out so that way you're not waiting forever for this part. Go ahead and pause until you have everything outlined. Okay, now I have everything outlined. I am going to erase my pencil lines. I'm going to start where I started with my outline because if I erase um, where I ended, I could smudge it. The ballpoint pen might not be completely dry yet. All right, so I have everything erased and now I'm ready to add some value. When I add my value, I will show you on the side here how my lines are going to go. And hopefully that will help you uh, with the direction of your lines. So here we go. We're going to start with the tree back here. I What I do at first for something like this, a big shape like this, I kind of draw a loose shape around the tree very lightly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with these types of lines and I am going to... Just bring them in here. I'm doing medium pressure as I do this. And as I go down, I'm fading my pressure out. I'm going to go up here at the top and I'm going to kind of scribble at it like that to blend out my line to create a little bit of darkness closer to my outline and then blending it out uh, towards the line that I've already created. This is exactly how I teach my online classes or my online lessons showing you how to shade with the cross hatching method that I use. And yeah, this is pretty much how it goes. So I've got my top. Now I'm going to come in here around the uh, penguin and I'm going to go ahead and do these types of lines through here because I'm just wanting to create that illusion that the um, there's a shadow around the penguin on the tree. Does that make sense? Because the tree is technically behind the penguin. 
Now I'm scribbling at that edge to create that um, gradient look so that way it doesn't look so crosshatchy. Um, I'm blending it out and I'm at this point just using medium pressure. The lighter you apply the better because if you apply it and it's too dark you cannot take it away. Going down here on the tree and I am just making gonna make it black because it is underneath and behind the penguin. Now when I'm coming this way I'm going to make lines like this just down here and around at the base of the tree. I'm going to go pretty much the whole way and then I'm going to taper off. And then again, I'm going to use that scribble method to blend out from the outline to the marks that I've already made. Now for the rest of the tree, I kind of want to give it some texture. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to create lines like this to give the illusion of it having, you know, texture. It's, it's kind of like when people put those marks on windows. Um, it's glass, it's there, it's a tree, it's texture, it's there. So that's why I did that. And in those spots, we can darken them up with watercolor. Down here on the base of the trunk, um, what I'm gonna do is the lines are gonna go this way, and I'm just going to do the whole trunk lightly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that scribble method around the bottom and the top. I'm going kind of uh, more closer to the sides of the outline to create the illusion that the trunk is rounded, not flat, like that. Then to finish this off, what I'm gonna do is same type of lines like that. I'm just going to make them down here to create texture of grass or some kind of ground, just like that. Now let's move on to the penguin. Again, remember, you can pause at any time. I am going rather quickly, um, so uh, do it at your own pace with the pause button. Okay, we're gonna start with the face. And I use, I think of everything as a shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline the, the beak, the triangle, and then I'm gonna add some shading down by the tip. These lines are gonna go this way, like that, and they're just going to go down the tip. And then I scrub at the line to create that gradient look. All right, now I'm going to darken in the pupils. Those are gonna be black. And then again, I'm gonna create the whole head as a shape. So I am outlining it lightly. And then I'm gonna add value. So I'm gonna come in here at the little heart tip. I'm gonna go this way and lightly come up. Once I come up, I'm going to scrub at that to make sure that it blends. I'm going to add lines going this way towards the scruff of the hair to create some texture and then scrub at that so it doesn't look like an outline, it looks more like a fade. I'm gonna come down here, lines going this way, and I'm going to bring it up the bottom, or the uh, left side, and then scrub at it. Do the same thing on the right side, but this time I'm gonna scrub at it on the left side again leaving leaving a little bit of value differentiation between the tree uh, the pine tree and the penguin so that way it's got a highlight and then a shadow so that really creates your depth I'm gonna go on the inside and all I'm gonna do is kind of like draw a little bitty shape there and add some value down here the lines are gonna go this way and then I'm gonna scrub right here at the bottom to make sure it blends up. We're gonna go onto the scarf. I'm going to draw a little light shape there. My lines for the scarf are gonna go this way. So I'm gonna bring it in here up on this top left and I'm gonna scrub it out. And then I'm gonna bring it here going this way, this time down in this corner and then scrub it out. Now I am going to pretty much just do this 
on this side because it's in shadow. And then where I'm going to scrub it out is the side of the, the left side. So that way it kind of creates that shadow of the knot. And then at this point, your scarf could be kind of decorative if you wanted it to. Um, I think that I'm going to make stars. So I'm just going to plop stars in here like this and go all the way down just to add a fun pattern. And for that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly outline each star to give it some texture to the scarf, but not too much because we have a lot of texture everywhere else. Not everything needs to have that. And then for this, um, the bottom of the scarf, I'm just going to uh, lightly kind of scrub at it like this and bring it down to the points. Not all the way, just a little bit. That back scarf, I'm going to use lines like this right around the paw of the penguin to create that. And then I'm going to fade it out fade it out and then do the same thing to the bottom of the scarf here that we did to the other side. And actually I am going to take those horizontal lines and do the whole back up top. Then I'm going to scrub at it to blend it together. Staying more towards the paw when I get down to it. So that way it creates that depth of pushing it behind the paw. Perfect. Okay, for the candy cane, I am, just like I did the star, I'm just going to pick the top. Like, okay, so here's my line. I'm just going to do a thin line of uh, light pressure around the whole thing just to give it texture. Now I'm moving on to the other side. I'm going to create lines like this right here down the black part of the penguin. And as I get down, I'm going to fade out because down here is another shadow that I'm going to fade up. And then at that point, I scrub at these little corners in the sides to blend it. I can create a shape there if I want to. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here, horizontal lines to fade into the center and then horizontal lines to fade into the center and then scrub it out. I'm going to do a triangle shape on the paw and then I'm going to add lines like this, vertical lines, and I bring them down. And then I can scrub at that at the base just to blur out the beginning starts of those lines. Perfect maybe a little bit up here because it looks a little bare. Same type of horizontal lines. Nope, sorry, vertical lines. <laughs> Perfect, okay. For the next paw, I'm doing the same thing. I did my little triangle and then I'm going to make sure that I create some kind of shadow for the scarf because the scarf is in front of the paw. So just kind of scrubbing at that side there. And then I'm going to make sure that I bring in those vertical lines and then scrub there to create that depth. Back in the back right here, these two little spots are technically black. I'm gonna go back to my horizontal lines and I am not gonna go as dark as the tree, but I want to create that depth. And what might happen is you might like do what I did where both the values are the same so you can go back into the tree and deepen that up so that way it pushes it further back again. Going down to this little section right here it's just going to be colored in black pretty much. Okay so for the middle section we do want to create some value within that white space just like we did up here so I'm going to kind of create a shape little bitty kind of like half oval and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in to this point right here with these types of lines and I'm just going to pull it out and around the um, candy cane. Do the same thing down here, same lines, pulling it around and down the candy cane. 
And if you want, if it feels a little like off because there's nothing here, you can kind of put in some right here in the center and scrub it out. Super light. This is supposed to be a white section. So you don't want to have a lot of value, but you want it to have some. And we'll call that done. For the legs, we are going to start with a vertical line at the base here, or at the where the body meets the leg, and blend out. So, blending out. And then we do want to create some down here at the toes, so I'm just going to put in a few, nothing much. I'm just kind of pulling them from the tip of the toe, just to create that texture. And then I kind of make a rectangle shape inside of the um, the leg. Now, the only thing left we have to do is to create um, some shadow underneath him or her. So I'm just going to take these lines that we did underneath the uh, tree and we're going to add it on the puddle underneath the penguin. Nothing big, just a little bit of line, very light pressure. Okay, and now we are ready for paint. So fun. I am going to swatch my colors on this side, so that way you can um, you can see what colors I'm using, especially if you do not have the same palette as mine. I will try and explain the colors as best as I can. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pretty fluffy brush. I have size 4's Escoda. This is an Ultimo. And I'm going to pick up a green. This green is similar to, I would say, um, Sap Daniel Smith. And I'm going to create a light wash of this green on my pine tree back here. When I say light, I mean light. You can, just like the ballpoint pen, you can always add more. You cannot really take it away very easily. So light wash, it's all about layering when you want to create depth with ballpoint pen and watercolor. And then we let that dry. I'm going to move on to a less fluffy brush and use that same light mixture of the green and I'm going to put it on the scarf. I'm not painting the stars. Okay, now I choose a different area to work because I want to let that dry. I'm picking up a gray. All right, so I have my gray and I'm watering it down just like I do everything else because you can always apply more. I'm going to do the outside of the penguin. So the pencil or the pen marks that we've created are like a map. So that's where I'm putting my wash of color lightly on there and then I will wet my brush, dry it, and then I can blend it out with my brush. I just touch all those areas lightly and blend. I move on to the bottom and do the same thing, touching all those areas that I created the darkness, cleaning my brush, blending it out. Now I'm going to pick up some orange. This is like permanent orange, Daniel Smith color, pretty true orange. The gray was a true gray as well. I'm touching it to the spots that are dark. And then I'm cleaning my brush and blending it out. I'm going to come in here and do the candy cane, so I'm picking up some red. Um, a true red, permanent red, uh, any red you really have will work. This is more pink, which is fine too. And I'm picking uh, which section I want to be red and which section I want to be white. It doesn't matter as long as you alternate. I'm just painting the full color in there. All right, now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the base. Oh, you know what? I haven't been swatching my colors. Okay, well, let's do that now. So I have a gray. It's just a true gray. 
I have the orange, let's say, I would call it permanent orange in Daniel Smith or whatever true orange you have. There we go. And then some kind of red. I'm even using like a pinky color, almost like, um, I don't even know, maybe a quadacridome. And then in Daniel Smith. Okay, so those are the colors we've used so far. Now let's do the base, a raw umber type color here for the base of the tree and possibly some, some uh, deepening of tones in other colors later. So just paint that on lightly. We'll do the bottom of the ground here. I'm gonna add some yellow ochre. We're using lots of colors in this one. Some yellow ochre into that brown and I'm just going to run it at the top. And if the trunk blends into this, the better, because it doesn't matter. It, we're gonna add brown on top. This is just a good base. Perfect. And now we're going to take what I would call a phthalo turquoise. Add some water to that show you what it looks like on the paper. Nice and vibrant. It's going to go down here at the puddle. I'm focusing mainly on the shadow that we created. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clean brush with water and I'm going to blend it out to fill the rest of the puddle in for now. And we'll do that again to create another layer and deepen everything up. But we don't want to start dark. I also want to take that same blue just to pop it back in again and highlight her eye right there. Perfect. My next step is to take that yellow ochre that we had used um, earlier and I'm just going to paint these stars yellow. I think painting these yellow too will match it nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Perfect. Oh, she's so cute already. All right, now to add value. So I'm picking up that green and I'm going to put some brown in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch all the places that I have shadow, not the little texture parts, just the shadow. Now I'm gonna take a clean brush and I'm gonna blend it out. This clean brush has water on it, so when you touch that area, it should kind of melt into the other green that we've already laid down. I kinda of wanna take that green with the brown and run it all along the side of the penguin and blend. Now I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna take that same brown green mixture and I'm going to apply it to all the areas that we have applied uh, the pen to the scarf. And then I'm going to blend it out. Now we're getting some value up in there. Her paws, I think they need a little bit more depth and darkness. So I'm adding that gray and I'm going to pop this on here. Now when I do this, it might change how I feel about the background, but that's okay. Um, luckily, we can always add more. So I'm just going to blend it out. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to take that orange, permanent orange, get some of that on my palette. Tap, I mean tap that raw umber to make it a, I, did, I even got too much, to make it a burnt orange. And it's going to pop in anywhere we applied, again, that pen. 
It's like a map that we already created for ourselves. And then I just blend it out. Okay. Oh, so cute. Um, let's talk about this bottom part. We have the yellow ochre right here. And then tapping the brown. And touching those places that we've applied the pen and blending it out. Okay, I'm also going to, while it's wet, I'm gonna to touch my green. I'm gonna pick it up and I'm going to run it along that line. It's going to blend in with all the other colors. If you like that look, then you can do it again to a different line that you have to create some other colors in there. Perfect. So it's not so golden. All right. Now to move on to the puddle, I'm going to pick up that teal color, which again, I called it kind of like a Daniel Smith uh, Thalo turquoise. And I'm going to place it on the shadow. Each time I'm getting just a hair darker. And now I'm going to clean my brush and blend. Last step, we are going to put some green in that yellow ochre to create a different color of the green, kind of like a limey, not a limey because yellow ochre, but a yellow green. And we're going to touch these spots and blend them out, kind of like tapping, just, just tapping around them to create that illusion of pine needle texture. You don't need to do it everywhere, but just tapping it out. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, last thing, I am going to deepen up behind the arms or paws, I don't know what they are, but I'm gonna deepen this up and this just so they stand out a bit more because right now I feel like I'm losing it. So, and then we're gonna call this done. I hope you guys had a great time sketching this penguin with me. If you did sketch this and you are posting on Instagram, don't forget to use the hashtag createdec2020. I would love to see your cute little penguins. And until next time, everybody, I'll see ya.